Okay, we're in section 109. As always, there'll be contents to read through, examples to do, and then exercise to get busy with. My name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells's Advanced Course in Algebra, which dates back to 1904. This document is a PDF document. It's been prepared for the Prison Mathematics Project participants only. <coughs> At some point in the future, it will be published. Again, my last name is Bannon. My email address is also Bannon. That's B as in boy, the at symbol. Uh, let's see, N, N, O, N, dot U-S. And again, if you, if you email me, tell me you're interested in uh, learning about when it's going to be published, I'll certainly keep you informed about when it's published. All right? So let's take a look through the document. As I'm looking through this, you know, so I say, what's this section going to be about? We don't know until we start reading it, but it's about the summation of a series. So I realize a lot of students are reading that and they're saying, what's a series? A series is a summation of a sequence. So a sequence, you know, you might have A1. Let me write this down for you. This is sequence. A1, A2, A3, yada, yada, yada. Uh, by the way, it goes on forever. Here's the deal, though. They want me to sum it together, which is a summation. They call it a series, all right? So the series would be A1 plus A2 plus A3, plus yada, yada, yada. Now, by the way, the, the, I realize that sort of like language certainly changes over time. When people say series nowadays, there are, there, the indication is they're adding together a sequence, all right? He says summation of series, by the way. Series means a summation of sequence, all right? Now, this type of series going to give you here, a very special type, is going to be recurring, all right? So someone says, what do you mean recurring? Uh, we have to look for patterns, and by looking for patterns, we'll see it. Now, he points it out in the beginning. Again, I'm not going to read the whole section. It's a tough section to get through, but he points about, you know, there's a pattern over here. By the way, you may not see the pattern, and the way I do it, the way he does it, it may look completely different to you, all right? So I want to get busy with the example, and this example that we're going to start with, you know, kind of looking at it, again, the assumption is you read through that. Uh, we want to, let me see where I am. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I should mention this to you as well. I do, I do a summary. You know, I talk about summation notation. Um, I talk about a method for doing it, yada, yada, yada. I talk about what a recurring series is. I'm just re kind of repeating what he said. Uh, but I got to get busy with an example. And so I got to be honest with you. If I were looking at this problem over here and someone said, could you figure out what the summation is? Someone would say, well, what do you mean summation? The summation would look something like this over here. It would look like an addition. That's what that means over there. And I'd start, you know, n equals something. And by when I say that, I'm going to say maybe n starts at zero. And this dot, 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 the ellipsis, it goes off forever. All right? So if I were looking at that, I would clearly say, you know, looking at it, you know, no x, 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x. So I'm going to say it looks like x to the n. What I have a tough time with, though, is these things over here, which are the coefficients. I don't know what they are. I don't know the coefficients. All right, I wish I did because I just write it down really quickly. All right, like for example, if this one over here was a little bit easier to write down, you know, you know, like let's say we're, you know, one plus x plus x squared plus yada, yada, yada. I could write that one down quickly. By the way, the other problem I got after I do that is, is there a formula for me to do the sum? And that's gonna be tough. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. Nor is I'm saying it's a consistently told story. There's all kinds of variations on how to do this. I'd say the best way to do this is to recognize it. So what I'm going to do is I make assumptions about it. And when I put my assumptions down, you may not agree with my assumptions, but I'm going to say, after reading it, I'm going to assume that the pattern here is a pattern of three. So I'm going to write that down for you. So I'm going to say, you know, I don't know how to, how to do it, but I'll write down this over here. It's going to, you know, I'll put down two, and then I'll put down... I'm sorry, 2a. Sorry about that. I forgot to put the a down. We'll talk about that meaning later, okay? 2a plus, looks like a b, and then it looks like a 5. So I got, again, I'm not saying that's correct. I'm just putting down this, I think it's recurring. All right, let me, let me do it, like, I'll, I'll move up. I'll shift it up once, and I'll go to this over here. And I hope it's got the same pattern. So what do you mean by that? I'm hoping it's going to be an A plus 5B plus 7. 
yeah, I know this is tough, but I have to, I'm looking at it, and I'm wondering if I'm seeing a pattern there. And I, I have to eliminate for A and B, and whatever I say, I'm going to really check it out, by the way. I really mean that. So let me write this down for you. I, I will be erasing this stuff, but I want to write down what I would see. I'd see 2A plus B equals minus 5. I like to write in standard ways, and this would be A plus 5B equals 7. And I want to figure out what the A and the B is in the problem. And I'm hoping I can do it easily. And furthermore, I hope they're really kind of simple numbers for me. So I'm about to buy the equation by minus 2. I'll be erasing this later because it's just my chicken scratch from really old material, by the way. And if it doesn't work out, you know it doesn't work out. What do you get? Minus 2A, uh, minus 10B, equals minus 14. And what are you getting over there? It looks like minus 9B equals, did I make a mistake somewhere? Let me see, I said multiply by minus 2. I see it now, it's minus 7. The reason I said that, the numbers are not working out nice. This would be plus 14, sorry about that. I'm expecting nice looking numbers. I wasn't expecting to see any fractions in the first problem. So what do you get over here, 9? So what's B equal to? B would be equal to minus 1. All right, now, now I gotta get, I got to see if I can get the A. And the way I would do that, I think I would look at this equation here, and I think I could do that now. So 2A minus B, whoops, made a mistake already. It's not B, it's minus 1, right? That's what B is, equals minus 5. Well, I could do that by inspection, but let me go through the work. 2A equals minus 4, and A equals minus 2. All right, I'm going to write that down for you. The A is minus 2, and the B is going to be minus 1. Well, I'm going to start to erase my chicken scratch. It's like scratch work on the side. I'm going to erase this over here. I forgot the A. And by the way, I'm still not saying it's right. All I'm saying, I, I definitely got a pattern. All right, what's my pattern? It's, you know, the, uh, uh, what, what I believe is a pattern in this uh, uh, multiplying polynomial. All right, by the way, it may not be. All right, so let me write down what I believe I need to multiply this by. And I want to I get, I want to erase this thing over here too. I'm going to call this S now. And I believe if I took S and multiplied it by a polynomial, which is going to be tough to do, by the way. I'll tell you what the polynomial is going to be, though. It's going to be, let's see, 1 minus, let's see, Bx. I'm sorry, plus Bx. I'm sorry. Plus Ax squared. And let's see what you get there. You would get, this is a multiplying polynomial, by the way. 1 minus x minus 2x squared. All right, now what I have to do, and this is really a tough part for me. I got to do this. I got to take this multiplier, and I am hoping when I do it that I definitely see what I'm expecting to see which is a tremendous number of cancellations in the problem, all right? I want to put out what I mean by this. In a very basic level, if you're given a series like this one over here, 1 plus x plus x squared plus yada, 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 and I call that s, and what I do if I multiplied that by minus x, it's a very simple example, what would you get? You would get minus x, minus x squared, minus yada, yada, yada. And if you add those two together, what would you get? One minus x. Again, I'm hoping something really simple like this over here. What would you get over there? One. So s would turn out to be one over one minus x, which is a remarkable story, by the way, to claim that's the case. By the way, I'm not saying it's true for all x. I'm just saying it's remarkable I could come up with that by doing a simple multiplier. Now, by the way, this only works for certain values. Maybe I should write that down for you. It only works if the absolute value of x is less than one. What does that mean is proper fraction? Now, someone's going to say, 
Well, that was an easy one. I've seen that before. I'm sure you have. At least I hope you can recall seeing it before. But I got a bigger problem over here. All right? I don't have something so simple like that. I'm looking at this one over here, and I'm wondering, could I multiply it out? And I got to be honest with you, I think I can. And the way I would do it, I want to point out what I mean by that. I would distribute one thing at a time. And what I mean by that, I would take the one and then multiply it across the S like right away. All right? Now, when I do that, I want to point out what I'm getting. That's super simple. I just get this back. And I want to point out whether it's right over here. All right? Now, the next one I have to do, and I want to point out, it's really not that bad to write down. What am I going to multiply now by? Well, I'm going to be taking the um, this term here, and I'm going to multiply it across S. And let me just outline that for you. Multiply it across this over here. And what would you get? Well, let's take it. That's more difficult, right? So you get minus 2x. You get minus x squared, minus 5x cubed, minus 7x4, minus 17x5, yada, yada, yada. By the way, I don't even know what comes after those dot, dot, dots yet. I, I don't know. I can't tell you what comes next. All I can tell you is I know how to multiply. Let me keep going. And now what we're going to do is multiply this term across the S. What's the S here? Let me get my eraser out. Erase this over here. This is what S is. And S is this thing over here. This is more difficult. And I want to tell you why it's more difficult. Looking at it, uh, looking at minus 2x squared times 2 is minus 4x squared, right? I got that term. And then minus 2x squared times x is minus 2x cubed. And then minus 2x squared times 5x squared is going to be minus 10x4. Boy, this is working out. Minus 2x squared times um, 7 is minus 14. You notice I stopped there. You keep going. Now, someone says, why are you stopping there? I, I, I really, I, I only got terms up to the fourth degree. And what am I hoping for? I'm hoping that I'm seeing things. And I want to start to add these together. And what I mean by that, I'm going to outline that for you. I'm going to add all three of these together. And I'm going to add all three of these together. And I'm hoping as I do that, life becomes really simple. All right, so the, so the left side is really easy to do. What are you going to get? S minus XS minus 2X squared S. So I'm going to say that was really simple. I, I'm not there yet, though. I'm not saying I am. Now, the right side, i got to be honest with you, it looks really tough. But I do see two. Right, I don't see any other, any other constants of the problem. I'm going to do the x's now. And what do you get? x minus 2x is going to be minus x. So what do I see now when I add this together? I would see 2 minus x. All right, now let's go to the squares. 5, 4, none. Let's go cubes. 7, now I have 2, now I have none. 17, I'm in fourth powers. 10, none. All right, there's a pattern here. Now, by the way, someone says, well, you don't know what these are. I'm expecting a pattern now. I'm expecting it. All right, but someone says, I don't know what the next term is. We could write it down now, but let's not worry about that. I'm just going to say things are working out as advertised. So let me write down what you get. And I'm going to put this over here now. We factor the S out. And you've left off with 1 minus X minus 2X squared equals 2 minus X. Remember, I want to find out what S is. What's S? S will be equal to 2 minus X over 1 minus X minus 2X squared. Right, that's really simple now. And I'll tell you why it's simple. I got an infinitely long problem here originally. Let me point out what I mean, that this is infinitely long. And now I got a finite expression for it, right? There's a finite number of terms there. By the way, I'm not saying it's true for all x. I'm just saying that there are some x where this would be absolutely true at this point, provided the pattern holds. By that dot, dot, I'm going to assume the pattern's holding. Here's my problem, though. 
I, I really have to start writing this thing down as a sum. It's not written as a sum. So what I want to go over, I'm going to start to erase now. Um, hopefully I've talked enough about this over here. I'm going to start to erase all this business over here. And I want to concentrate on what we need to do next. What I have to do next is I've got to get this to look like things I know about. All right? I want to point out the things that I do know about. I know about this sum over here. And by what's written down for me here, which is 1 plus x plus x squared plus yada, yada, yada. I know about that sum. And what's that sum equal? It equals this. And what do I know about this sum? It only converges with these numbers over here. My suspicion is this thing's going to work out, and it's going to look something like that. So what I want to do over here is I want to kind of break it into linear factors. Now, again, some of the question is why are you doing that? This is the linear factor. So I want to see if I can do that. And it might be tough, but I'll write this down for you. And again, maybe impossible too. So it's going to be 2 minus x. This is something to do with partial fractions that we've seen before. This would be 1 and 1. x and 2. 2x, I mean. It looks like plus x minus... Let me see if that's true. You get 1. Minus 2x plus x minus x. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do... I'm going to assume that it can be done. This would be a over 1 plus x plus b over 1 minus 2x. Again, we're just reviewing old material now. I want to point out what I would do, and I want to point out what we're looking at. We're looking at this, and I want to figure out the a and the b now, if I can. And let me just review that with you. So you get 2 minus x. I'm multiplying both sides by the LCD. This would be a, 1 minus 2x, plus b, 1 plus x. You may have to go back and review uh, partial fractions. If you do, you go back and review it. This would be x equals, well, I'm going to pick a really easy value. I'm going to pick minus 1. And what would you get? You would get 3 equals 3a. Well, that worked nicely, didn't it? What's a? a is 1. I'm going to get my eraser out. I'm going to erase this here. I'm going to put the number 1 down now. All right, I know a is 1. Again, this means a is 1. Now I'm going to pick another value that I believe to be easy. You make your own decisions. I'm going to pick x to be 0. You would get 2. Remember, a is 1. And if I chose x to be 0, what would you get? Well, 1 minus 0 is still 1. I don't know what b is. And it's going to be b times 1 now. Why is that? I said x is 1. I'm sorry, x is 0. So 0 plus 1 is 1. What's b? b is also 1. All right, let me point that out to you. So it's 2 equals 1 plus b. b has to be 1. Let me get my eraser out. And again, I'm just talking through the problem. And I got this over here. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to erase my uh, partial fraction problem. All right? You know, over here, all that work. And again, we're just talking through what's typed up here, what I did to get there. That's all we're talking about. What did I do to get there? That's all we're talking about. Erase this all over here. All right, so I'm, I'm there. And I realize that this does look like that series I know about. And i got to write that down for you. And by writing it down, it might confuse you, but I'm going to write down 1 over 1 plus x. But i got to get this written so it looks like I'm familiar with it. And it's supposed to be written as 1 over 1 minus something, right? So I'm going to write this over here. 1 over 1 minus. Well, minus what? Minus x. All right? So I, I hope you agree that's equal. Now, someone says, what are you looking at? I'm looking at this over here, but now i got to plug in minus x. So what do I get? I would get 1 plus minus x. I'm just plugging in. Plus minus x squared plus minus x cubed. 
I hope you realize I'm just plugging in up there. So again, this is a really important one. This is the geometric series. All right, let's keep going. I guess I got to do the other one too, don't I? What's the other one going to be? And we'll simplify it in a second. So it's going to be 1 over 1 minus 2x. What does it look like? It looks like 1 plus 2x. I'm just making a substitution. Plus 2x squared plus 2x cubed plus 2x. You get the idea. This goes on forever, by the way. All right, so I got those. What I got to do now, I got to add those two together. All right, and adding those two together is going to be difficult. All right, so I got to do that. And I'm looking at it, and I notice that 1 plus 1 is 2. That's not so bad. What's the next one going to be? I'm, just, I'm doing term by term, by the way. I want to see if I get a pattern out of this. And I want to point out what I'm seeing over here. And again, it might seem strange to you, but I'm seeing minus 1 plus 2 x. I want to point out what I'm doing. I'm just looking at things. This is 1 and 1. This is this term and that term added together. I'm going to put the next one down. What's the next one going to be? Plus. Well, let's see what you get over there. Well, you would get minus 1 squared plus 2 squared. X squared. You know what? I want to write the first term a little differently. And I want it to write look like these other terms over here, if I can. So I'm going to erase this first term here. And I want to see if I can write it. It's always going to be 2, by the way. But I want to see if it's written down so it looks like these other terms. So I'm going to write this over here. This is a 1, and this is a 1. All right, so let's write this down. And there's no, there's no x here. I'll put x0. So it's going to be minus 1 to the 0 plus 2 to the 0. And I think I got a pattern now. This would be minus 1 cubed plus 2 cubed, x cubed, plus yada, yada, yada. All we're doing is adding terms together. Right now, I'm going to write a summation down for you. So s, you remember what s was, top of the page, is going to be equal a sum, n equals, well, I'm, I'm going to write a little different than it's in the notes, by the way. I'm going to start at 0 and go off to infinity. So someone says, why do you write it differently than you have in the notes? Well, sometimes people write down things differently and they look at my notes and say, gee, my answer looks different. Well, sometimes they do look different, but it's really the same answer. So I'm going to say, what do I get? I get x to the n. Right? I'm seeing that every time I show what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that, x to the 1, x to the 2, x cubed. Now I'm going to write these powers down. Now let me put this down for you. So I'm going to say... It's going to be 2 to the n. Let me outline what I'm saying. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, plus minus 1. Let me show where I'm seeing this over here. And by the way, there's many ways to write that down to the nth power. This is an answer. All right? Now, granted, I realize some people are looking at this and wondering, is it the same answer? It is. And how do I know that? You could expand this if you want, and you're going to get the same exact thing I got over here. All right, let me just show you that. If you start at 1, what are you going to get? 2 to the 0 plus minus 1 to the 0, x to the 0. What's the next term going to be? Well, if you're at 1, you're going to 2 now. So we're going to get 2 to the 1 plus minus 1 to the 1 x to the 1. You're getting the same exact thing. So this is also a good answer. And be aware of that. right? Now someone says, well, what happens if I don't write the same answer you have down? I'd have to look at it. I'd have to look at what your answer looks like. 
But I'm going to say they're probably the two, two answers that are most obvious to most people. All right? The other thing I want to talk about is the, um, the convergence on it. All right? So what I want to do is I want to look at each one separately. And the first one, I want to put out the first ones over here. This one would converge. Let's write this down. When this thing here is this thing over here. Now, what does that mean? X would have to be, the absolute value of X is that. But that's done. Let's look at the other one. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be 2X now is this thing over here. Right, so I got, I got two problems now to consider. And, and, and certainly, you know, it's got to work for both of those. And who's more restrictive? This one is. So I'm going to point out what that means to me. Looking for an integral of convergence in this one over here, I'm going to say that the absolute value of X has to be less than one-half. Now, what does that mean in a number line? This would be zero, this would be one-half, and this would be one-half. Interval of convergence is between those two numbers, and that's it. This is going to be true for the axis between, oh, I'm sorry, it's minus one-half, between minus one-half and one-half. If you want to put an interval down over there, it's a little more complicated. We're not at the level of integrals yet. So this is good. This is serious conversion for this thing over here. All right, we got both of those answers. All right, I, I got to be honest with you, a tough section. What I'm going to do, I'll make assumptions about doing the problems. And what I'm doing, look at the problems. Again, my assumptions are patterns of three. Now, here's what you do. You're going to model it on what we just did over here. Let's go back over here. So what are you going to do? It's going to be like the A, B, constant number. Let me put this down over here. So what are you going to write down? I'll write this down. 4A plus B plus 7 equals 0. Then you're going to do another grouping. I'm assuming a 3. I'll put that down for you. What would you get there? You would get A. I'm not going to finish this one, by the way. I'm just starting it out. And by the way, you might be surprised. You might make a mistake. All right, let me write this down for you. We're trying to find that polynomial that we multiply S by to have a bunch of eliminations happen. So let's write this as 4A plus B equals minus 7. Then we'd have A plus 7B equals 5. I think what I would do is I'd multiply the second equation by minus 4. And what do you get there? You would get 4a plus b equals minus 7 minus 4a minus 28b minus 20. Now what do you get there? Let's take a look. The a's would disappear. You get minus 27 b's equals what? Minus 27, right? Well, lo and behold, b is 1. And I think I can get the A now, right? I'll, t I'll do this up here. And what do you get? Let's write this down, 4A. Let's take a look. Uh, plus 1 equals minus 7. 4A would equal minus 8. A would equal minus 2. All right, so again, I'm not going to finish the problem for you. I'm just saying I think I know what the A and the B is. So the A is going to be, um, I wrote it down, right? Oh, I'm sorry, it's right here. So this is the A, and that's the B. So what do we write down? Let's, let's write this down, all right? And to do that, I guess what I have to do, and certainly, I, I know my work might look different, but I'm going to write that down for you. And what would you get? Let, let's just remind you. I know the work looks different. And you remember what I did? I, I multiplied by what? Uh, let's say like 1 minus ax minus bx squared. Let's write that down. 1 minus ax and then plus x squared. That's going to be the b, which is 1. All right. So I'm going to say that's the multiplying polynomial. Right? Now, you know, I know it's a little different over here. You can look at my work over here as well. It's a little bit different, a little variation of it. And, you know, if you did that, I want to point out you'd get something. And um, 
it's really not bad to do. It's something we did before. And again, you go through the same process. And there's going to be a bunch of these. Again, my assumption is they're happening in groups of three. First group, and again, it's going to take study on your part, and then the second group. It takes study. Again, you may look at the work I'm doing over here. I know I do it a little bit differently, but the bottom line, the intent is the same. All right? There is work down, though, and the work might be helpful. It may not be helpful. I do write an AN down for you as well, and an interval of convergence for you as well. I shouldn't say an interval of convergence. I should say um, a radius of convergence. It's one-third, right? So I'm going to say, for the most part, groups of three. Groups of three. Is it always groups of threes? No. But I'm putting down groups of threes. All right, groups of three. By the way, they say the order second degree. All right, groups of three over here. Uh, let me make sure I said that right. Yep, groups of three. Groups of, uh, let's take a look at this one. Turn, 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 term, determine the values of x is convergent. Oh, I guess, you know what, I, I didn't do any much work over there. So I'm going to still say groups of three. Groups of three. I'm going to say it. Uh, I'm still going to say it, groups of three. All right, it, not necessarily groups of three, but I'd like to say groups of three. It's the easiest thing you can do. Groups of two would be even easier, by the way. But I don't think groups of two is going to work on these problems. Groups of threes. They want me to continue this two or more terms. I'll tell you what, I don't think I could do that unless I got the generating function for it. And that's what we're looking for, to get that generating function. And, oh, you know what, this is a group of four. Sorry about that. Let me see if they said that. No, they didn't. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. There's a footnote here. They're actually telling me the scale. They're telling me it's third order. It's a group of four. By the way, when I mean third order, it's a cubic. Uh, 219 is a group of two. Second, yeah, so three. You get the idea. I'm sorry. They, they tell you. I, they're telling you. I don't know if Wells tells you. Maybe I'm telling you. All right, 221, what is that one saying? Third order. What does that mean? I got to take it up to this. All right, got to do that. That's more difficult, by the way. No doubt about it. Uh, 222. Oh, thank God, it's the last question. Yeah, third order. I turned it up to here. All right, then you got to find another group too, right? I'll put that one down for you. And let me do that one over there. This would be the next group. It's work, though. I'm not saying it's not work. It is work. It is work. All right? It is work. All right? So I think I did that, and I think you'd like a good idea to work at that and look at it. All right? All right. Let's take a look at Sage. What's Sage? It's a computer algebra system. It's remarkable what it's capable of doing. It's open source software. Go to this website. You can download it or use the interactive web-based application. And what I'm going to claim over here is I'm just using it to do some you know, convenient things like defining a function, taking a partial fraction, is able to do that. I want to point out this thing says Taylor. What it's doing is creating a series from it. All right? And when I say a series, this is a series where it's degree four, and I'm clearly seeing that. And again, I do a bunch of stuff. You may want to take a look at that. But again, our intent here is not for you to really study the SAGE stuff, although you get introduced to it. The intent here is to do what we gave you, right, those exercises. And they are not easy. I worked through that myself, and I found a lot of the problems to be a lot of work. In other words, they weren't easy-peasy, lemon-squeezing. Here's the deal, though. Do the problems. If you're finding errors in the problem, what I would like you to do is tell me that there's an error. Now, I believe there are errors, but I really don't know where the errors are. I just know when I write things, I create errors. Everyone does. But let's say you're in section 109.3, and you're doing problem number one, and you say, you know what? You made an error. I will listen to you. I will look at my work, and I will try to correct it. My intent is to make the work better and better and better. How does work get better? Only if people reach out to me and let me know that there's a problem with it, and then I'll correct it, all right? 
But again, we're giving some hint. We're giving some work over here. Please reach out to me if you need to reach out to me. Thank you for paying attention.